Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. With a stroke of his pen Trump just shook liberals and proved they're lying liars. The media has been trying to prove, since he decided to run for president, that Trump, and every single person who supports him, are Nazi-loving white supremacists. Fact is, nothing could be further from the truth. The patriots who support Trump, and Trump himself, are God-fearing lovers of America and the Constitution of the United States. After the riot in Charlottesville, Va, Trump made a heartfelt speech which in no way was supportive of the violence or hate groups. But the media twisted his words and spread lies about him and about those of us who support him. It was ugly and disgusting. It will come as no surprise to the patriots who support Trump that today he signed a resolution that condemns the racist violence and domestic terrorist attack in Charlottesville. It furthermore rejects white nationalism, white supremacy, and neo-Nazism as hateful expressions of intolerance that are contradictory to the values that define the people of the United States. Interestingly, he signed the resolution the same day as he had earlier mentioned the riots, saying there are some pretty bad dudes on the other side also. And guess what? That's true. While none of us should be the least bit surprised by Trump's signing of the resolution, I am sure the liberals will be shocked. And then, I am sure they will somehow twist this, too. Sad, huh? H. T. The Hill Rex Tirson just stunned everyone with his latest move to fix what Obama broke. Secretary of State Rex Tirson is reforming the State Department, after he agreed with Trump that the department's budget needed to be cut by a third. There's just been so much wasted in our government for far too long. And Trump, along with Tirson, are going to change that. Tirson said that his reform of the department would be the most important thing he will do as Secretary of State. The plan includes a possible merging of the State Department with the U.S. Agency for International Development. The aim would be to align resources and improve efficiency. Ah dot those words are just music to my ears. Save money and become more efficient? Government? Who knew it could be done? Trump, that's who. He's seen how ridiculously inefficient and wasteful our government has been for too long. Not the least of which during the past eight years under Obama. Get this, Tirson expects his plan to cut $10 billion from the department's budget over the next five years. That's right, that says billion. You know what that means, right? We've been wasting that $10 billion. That's downright disgusting, isn't it? His plan will also get rid of about 2,000 jobs. Now, that doesn't sound good, but, fact is, there's jobs that are just pure waste there. That's not what our tax money should be paying for. If you like the job Tirson is doing, please share this everywhere, to show your support. And comment thanks Rex. H. T. The Hill Moments ago Trump walked up to this little kid and read and did something heartbreaking. President Trump is an amazing president. No matter how much the mainstream media hacks attack him, he fights back by just being himself. This video below will just break your heart. I swear. Meet Frank Giacchio. Show. He is an 11-year-old boy that volunteered to come mow the White House lawn in order to show what people in his generation are capable of. The funniest part of the whole thing is in the video below. Get ready to watch it. Here's the reason that Frank came out to mow the president's lawn below. Sarah Huckabee Sanders put it out the other day that he'll work with the groundskeeping crew here at the White House and will help cut the grass at the Rose Garden, she said. The president is committing to keeping the American dream alive for kids, like Frank, and we're all looking forward to having him here. Frank is from Falls Church, Virginia and will be mowing the White House lawn this Friday. Even though I'm only 10, I would like to show the nation what young people like me are ready for, the letter read. 
share this to fight the lamest stream media and let's get Frank's message out there. This is America it's a country where if you work your hardest you can make it to the White House steps. MSNBC star just attacked Trump and supported Antifa with this sick statement. Sometimes I just don't know what to think anymore. In their ongoing battle to bring down the president at any cost, the MSM seems to have lost its mind. MSNBC host Nicole Wallace actually defended Antifa in front of God and everybody. Not only that, she said they are on the side of angels and good people. Yay, Antifa is pepper spraying people throwing water balloons with pee, paint and mace in them, throwing smoke bombs. Angels? Good people? Is she a complete idiot? Wallace's special comments came in response to some things Trump said on Thursday. He said, I think, especially in light of the advent of Antifa, if you look at what's going on there, you have some pretty bad dudes on the other side also, and essentially that's what I said. He also said, because of what's happened since, Charlottesville, with Antifa, when you look at really what's happened since Charlottesville, a lot of people are saying, and people have actually written, gee, Trump may have a point. I said there's some very bad people on the other side also. Discussing Trump's comments, Wallace said this, there were really bad guys on the side of the KKK, and then there were good people opposing the KKK. One of the people on the side of Angels lost her life. Can anyone send footage of Antifa to Ms. Nicole? Please. H. T. The Daily Caller Melania Trump just said the two words about hurricane heroes that every American should hear. Last night Melania Trump stole the show during the White House Historical Association dinner. It was a normal event, that is until Melania took the stage and dropped a truth bomb on the crowd. The First Lady began to talk about her experience working alongside hurricane victims and first responders to clean up the mess from the two major storms that just hit. And that's when she said it, the two words to perfectly describe the first responders. Guardian Angels. Melanina left the room in complete awe when she told them. We saw first responders some of whom went from Harvey's aftermath directly to the path of Irma helping those in need and serving as guardian angels to those left with only prayers and hope. She also talked about seeing all the acts of bravery, chivalry, and kindness from people who had just lost so much reminded her what true American character is. Melania is a great first lady and works very hard to do everything she can to represent our great nation well. Now it falls on us to help share her words that the hurricane heroes out there really are guardian angels, and show them how much America appreciates their hard work and sacrifice. Can I get an amen? See the 12 sexiest female soldiers on the planet, number 3 is armed and dangerous. An amazing social media account collects gorgeous photos of from its 34,500 followers on Instagram and it encourages people to send them beautiful pics of fearless female fighters. Many of the pics are absolutely stunning and the best part is that they are unafraid to fight for their country. Here is a video of Israeli women soldiers training to fight ISIS. Although, they deal with heavy weapons and tough training. These women are not afraid to show off a fun side. Israel started using female soldiers in the 1960s. All Jewish Israeli citizens are required to complete national service at the age of 18. This even includes women, who must serve two years in the armed forces. According to the Israeli Defense Force, 535 female Israeli soldiers have been killed in combat between 1962 to 2016. They make up about 20% of the Israeli Defense Forces within the ground. Navy, and Air Forces. The right of women to serve in any role in the IDF is equal to the right of men.
As soon as Trump heard what Susan Rice did, he ripped her to shreds with five cutting words. Former National Security Advisor Susan Rice is a known liar, and as the past few months have played out we've seen one lie after another slowly reveal itself. After it was revealed Wednesday that she did unmask the names of top Trump officials, President Trump put her on blast during an interview with reporters Thursday, The Hill reports. She is not supposed to be doing that, and what she did was wrong. We've been saying that. It's just the tip of the iceberg. She wasn't supposed to be doing that, the unmasking and the surveillance. I heard she admitted that yesterday. Rice, along with other top Obama officials, was accused of improperly unmasking American citizens tied to the Trump team during the 2016 election. House Intelligence Committee Chairman Devin Nunes, RCA, broke that news earlier this year. In case you missed it, here is a breakdown of what unmasking is. Federal agencies like the NSA collect information on foreign subjects of interest but are not allowed to collect information on Americans. American citizens are masked in intelligence reports to protect their identities. Americans can occasionally be unmasked by top officials, but only in rare cases. Nunes was concerned members of the Obama admin were only doing it to spy on the Trump team. When she was first accused, Rice denied knowing anything about it. Remember folks, this is the same person who could stare into a camera and say Benghazi was caused by a YouTube video. I know nothing about this. I was surprised to see reports from Chairman Nunes on that count today. Now she's singing a different tune, admitting to House investigators that she unmasked the identities of Michael Flynn, Stephen Bannon, and Jared Kushner and revealed them internally. She said she did it because United Arab Emirates Crown Prince Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nain visited New York City without informing the Obama administration, and she wanted to know why. Honestly who can believe anything this person says? Thank God Hillary lost or else none of these things would ever have come to light. And thank God we have a president who is willing to call her out loud and clear. H.T. The Hill